No spoilers ahead, I promise. Y'all already know who it is. Nah, y'all actually don't, but first name fresh, last name man, man. Let's get it. Today, the focus is going to be Ghost of Tush. I mean, my fault. Ghost of Tashima. Gonna speak about the good, the bad, despite of the hype. I mean, I was part of that hype too. Couldn't wait for it to come out. When it comes to combat, there's three types. Ghost, getting your ass jump, and dueling. Let's start with GYAJ, which means getting your ass jump. Can't lie, the combat is fluent and for the most part, there's no latency. When it comes to staying alive and dodging hits and reacting with hits and stuff like that, it's great. If you love Batman, you're definitely gonna love this. Like, it's great, honestly. That's, that's all I can say. I honestly enjoyed it. I'm into games like For Honor, which like the combat system is complex, but this was enough for me. I just wish that there were more dismemberment and death animations because seeing people die in the same exact way all the time, it, it gets a little repetitive and boring. You need to spice it up a little bit. Now as for ghost mode now, when I say ghost mode, I mean sneaking around and you know, catching an enemy by the surprise and all that. It's great. I enjoyed it. But the thing about that is there's not enough like variation like you will see the same animation over and over and over and seeing like the same animation like over and over and over it gets stale very fast so i think that they should add a little bit more to it dueling now which is one of my favorites i don't really have any complaints with the dueling Honestly, I'd enjoyed it. I would say don't try this on lethal on your first go through. Like play this on like medium or hard if you really want to challenge. But lethal is like if you're not trying to survive, like it's crazy. I enjoyed it. It felt like I was going head to head up against somebody in like Dragon Ball Z, Tenkaichi, Budokai 3. Like that was like my favorite one. Like it gave me those type of vibes. And in my opinion, I feel like this is like the spotlight of the game for me. Well, one of them. Because like to be able to go up head against somebody and like not have any complaints about how the game operates and stuff like that i think that's a good thing now we can speak about how beautiful this game is like these there's these are not scripted things like you can just be on the side of like a cliff and just really take in like what the game has to offer but as there is beauty in the game there is also you know the ugly like screen blank outs for every single interaction like i'm used to games like last of us that seamlessly go through like a movie so this makes a big deal for me i don't want to be seeing the screen go black every time somebody says hey like come on now for the horse now it feels lifeless it feels like a bicycle with no physics when you hit a tree you don't react to it you don't even fall off like on red dead so that bothers me the wind directing system, it feels like they're shoving it down your throat that you have to rely on the wind. So now it, the beauty of the game, which they're trying to showcase, quickly becomes ugly because when you're trying to go somewhere and it leads you to the edge of a cliff and you can't get around and then you got to waste time to go back around, that gets a little annoying. Now for the story, I promise you that I wasn't going to spoil it and I'm going to stick by that and I'm not going to spoil it. The story, honestly, I'll give the story a six. Do not buy the game for the store. Do not buy. Now I'm just kidding, but don't buy it for $60 though. Definitely not worth that. You could give it a try and let me know what you think. I'm quite hard on games when I literally wait on it. Thanks for stopping by and remember one thing. Stay fresh.